All right, my boys, as you can see, I have already begun to play a little bit of Diamond. We're on our way up with our uh, Gladiator Beast all the way up to the top. Our strategy cannot be defeated. Now, I call this deck Spartacus because it's got the weapons. And as Spartacus, I am here to free my people. But due to the work with the AI, I have learned this. I must run Double Augustus and Rescue Cat. All right, I think this is one of those Snake Eye um, Fire King decks, but I think he bricked on hand traps, which, you know, it's bricking on hand traps, you know. So, Maxi, I don't take the challenge because I couldn't even do it if I wanted to. Um, this is back when I was trying, I was running Lava Golem along with uh, the uh, that Beast card that can bounce them both. So, you know, was in there. So we draw into the rescue cat and bam, no maxi, sorry. And then he ends turn again. So now at this point, my oh look, I drew it. Alpha the master of beasts. Like so the combo is summon lava gum to your opponent's side, special summon, bounce it back, haha. Ha. I've done that like two times. It's satisfying. Never got a scoop. Might have got an eyebrow though. <laughs> but definitely got the dub. So what's funny about this hand right i assume i assume that there is an ash an effect veiler and maybe another max c or even a uh um, what is that card gamma like i assume his hand is just a minefield so but you know hey gotta try it so i give him so i gave him my normal summon and activated an effect and put it in the graveyard just like against the opponent you might have seen where I said that that was such an advantageous sacrifice, this guy should see that as the same. So I'm hoping that if he has something like that, he takes the bait so that I can do this and surprise him. But no response. Suspicious. Blossom. So we're going to get our combo going. So we're basically, because we summon rescue, uh, cat, we're gonna just stay in the rescue cat card, so basically stay on one card and um, summon activate. There's our boy, attack. Okay, gladiation time. Summon our kings, tamer editor, and punishment. Punishment. I knew it was too good to be true. I knew it was too good to be true. 15 cards in the extra deck. No no movement after he played two maxis. You know he's got a nugget with the dipping sauce. So there he goes. He dips his nugget on my field. And kill all my monsters. Now funny enough. Ultimate Slayer. Only weakness. Regular cards. So Ultimate Slayer. You know. That's why you haven't been seeing it. So now I can still go combo because Tamer Editor is in the graveyard. Because Tamer Editor is in the graveyard and I didn't use my archetypal special summon yet, which was scarce. I was able to banish two cards and bring out my Gladiator Beast, which was Dragasis, which I had returned to the deck from my attack earlier. Allowing me to link two into Test Panther, giving me the chance to add the combat. And now I can go full combo beyond Nibiru. It's punishment time. All right. Then we're going to bring out Herc, I believe, because we got Forbidden Droplets. And, um, you know, I think we need a Spell Negate. It's probably what I did. I'm sure I did that. If I didn't do a Spell Negate, I'd be surprised. Oh, uh, yeah, Spell Negate. All right. And then now, now we're taking on five cards and he can't do anything or he just drew his starter and was like, what's the point? And he probably just drew his starter. He probably just drew into it and was like, forget it, end me. And I was like, no problem, my boy. No problem at all. <laughs> no problem, I'm gonna kill you with your own beer. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and hit him with that nugget. <laughs> night, night. 
All right, so you bail, and I believe I chose going first. I'm, I wasn't sure. I didn't see the little flash. But typically, either I'm choosing to go first or they're choosing to go first. Normally, you know, if and the only reason I'm going first is because they made me. So it doesn't really truly matter. But I find that when you make someone go first, it puts them on edge, you know. But regardless of what they try to defend against, they can't defend against it. So here we go. Opening up my turn. Now, when I open up and I see this field, now I'm just going to explain this to Duelist. This card right here says, basically, it can change the effect of any card you play into do something that it doesn't say on the card. No, it doesn't matter what this thing does unless you got called by the grave. But basically, unless you got a card that says your opponent can't activate their effects and then do your thing, this thing's always going to get you. So this is the perfect one card counter for this. And also it gets you a card. So let's go ahead and counter it. Ultimate to Saleya. And then you get that satisfying animation. And look, and then he max C. So think about this resource time. Such panic. I sent his linchpin card that he had put all his faith in back to the deck. More is to come. More is to come. And he doesn't even know it. More is to come. It's on the way. Maxi of terror. Maxi of response. Maxi of fear. Cannot save you. Let it resolve. Duh -duh. Now look. I drew called by the grave. Where were you last time? But regardless, since I drew it this turn, there's, there's no need. There's no need. We're going to terrorize. Destructione. Double Imperm. Maxi Yubel gone. This guy has no hand, no field. You see three cards. So that means he invested two cards into that. Gone with one card. And then I drew one. And then he lost his two to my one. Look at this. I'm on five cards right now. Six cards when I got this. Someone's losing this duel, I think. So then I use Fractile's effect. We're going to go ahead and just add our cards. Because my play style is very cautious. Because I've done all this nice banishing, I've gained so much tempo. No need to push through a maxi. No need to try anything different. Just give him some damage and pass turn. Draws. Lose. Now you might be wondering, why are all these duels you bail? Like I'm some kind of you bail bully. I am not. Those, this is the most dominant deck on the ladder and what everybody's playing. It's either this or Fire King. And what's funny about you bail is like you bail bricks and has like a... a, a a, a small opening hand, you know, maybe a couple monsters or something, right? You know, when the Fire King deck bricks, they seem to brick on hand traps and they brick on stuff like Ash and Maxi. And if they run out of Ash and Maxi, they just kind of just, ah, forget it. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. So that's just kind of what you bump into. So again, we're going with what we got here. And I, and I like, okay, sorry, I didn't hit pause. Um, I go for the resource game sometimes. Sometimes I just don't go bananas. And I couldn't count on him having Ash or whatever. And I didn't want to risk it. And I just, you know, and I know he's on U-Bell, so he can't really do a ton. You know, he could be on U-Bell, something else. But after I hit Lightning Storm and saw what I blew up, which was stuff like this, I, I was like, okay, he's probably not running U-Bell, some other hybrid. And he's on 40 cards. So I just took the chance. The set two. Since I opened with two Nervals, I just don't like opening with stuff like this. I found in my games that these are bad omens, so I try to play, play on my instinct sometimes. Like I've like when I get into the, to playing at night, at first I might be a little tired, but then once I get into my instincts, I just I just play, and um, the games come out great. So you smell tries to get going. Called by the grave, you know, again, I abandoned my hand traps to focus on the graveyard, which is called by the grave. And then, um, you know, you could say maybe 
I took a, I got rid of Ash and Maxi for triple two called by the grades of foolish and um three um evenly matched. Cause basically I found that a lot of times when I win with hand traps, you know, I probably could have won with my regular cards. And then also I find when I lose because I didn't have hand traps, if I had board breakers, I would have won. So I got rid of them. All right. So this guy's attacking. He's going to smack into this and you know, what's going to happen when we get some punishment, take 2000, you know, you bell sharing the pain. Jayden, don't worry. You're going to see, you're going to see Jaden again. Go dream about him. Good night. Oh, God. Now he's sweating. <laughs> he's sweating. So, no, we're going to go ahead and begin to add our cards. We're going to go and see if we got Ash. You know, are we hitting Maxi? We're not seeing Ash. We're not seeing Maxi. Feeling real good right now. So, I believe we go ahead and try to hit the combo. And, yes, we hit you rig, no Maxi. So, it's banish, banish time. We get rid of this. Then we're going to link two into the Blossom. Blossom gets our Archetypal Summon going, which is great. Archetypal Summon. And then we banish two. Win condition summoned. All right. So remember I told you about that whole graph, that thing I showed you about all of the uh, points on my chart about having all the knowledge. I have full knowledge. I know meta. I know his hand. I know his graveyard. Everything about his deck has been exposed over these four turns. This is the perfect time to execute my combo because if I do it right now, there's no way he's coming back because this one card is going to summon what? Opelousa. Gladiator Beast Heraklinos. Domitianus. And I'll have four to five cards in hand. Night, night. So we attack with our beast, send it back to the deck. We summon two gladiator monsters. Then special summon Domitianus. Nibiru cannot stop us now. Then the test of Panta. Test of Panta no show Khan Hogs duel. Then we activate the comeback. Bring back the Tamer Editor. Bring back the Gazardus Puppet. See if he can pass the test. Bring back Augustus to summon a quest that's from the hand to add a card back. <laughs> you shouldn't have never got out of bed this morning. It's always funny when they scoop on like Opelosa. I'm like, that's when you scooped? <laughs> you didn't see you was gonna lose when I was doing all that other stuff. What I like about you bell decks, all the W's are unique. None of these you bell decks are the same. They all got a little flavor. So what I have been doing recently, as you might have seen when I explained the deck, I run this card Foolish Return. It doesn't work in every case, but basically I, f I find it as a third Foolish Burial. And because I run as a third Foolish Burial, so I find that I've drawn Foolish Burial and Foolish Return at a higher rate. So try it out, Foolish Return. Get those uh, outlier dubs today. So... We, this man's going the hell off, you know, branded fusion. Look at him, you know, and you guys might even wonder, pause it one second, please, Mr. Branded man. One second, please. You might wonder, why T Dan? Why bother going second? Why duel every duelist at their full power? Because I'm on my Goku right now, my boy. You see, duelists who like to go first and put it all out there and really make a plan so that they can survive are definitely a Vegeta type. But the duelist who goes second, you know, like Goku, Goku shows up. How strong is this branded fusion? <laughs> I want to see you go full combo because when you defeat it, delicious. Let's continue. So we are playing against branded Ubel. And I don't believe he's released the Ubel yet. 
he has not released the U Bell yet. So the no. So we give him a little dank ruler no more. And then he plays this. Oh, now he releases the U Bell. Dank ruler no more. So all of his stuff is negated. Then we put Fire Formation Tinky. Now I do have a lot of preservation around Tinky because it does help to mess with the synergy of other cards. Um, and also I goofed and played Foolish Return right here because I wasn't paying attention. I was actually zombie dueling. <laughs> this was late at night. And I, I thought it was Foolish Burial, but it was Foolish Return, so I goofed. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he goes, he tries to use this, but he still gets the sin. So he's going to try to get uh, Atlantis's effect. He thinks he's going to get that. He's not. And he can't do any of that stuff. And he has no cards in hand. So so what So what do you think, you know, what do you think old YT Dan thinks about this? Well, I played Dark Ruler no more. He activated his back row. Nothing else is face down. No cards in hand. The graveyard is actually dead until the end of the turn. Looks like he's open for punishment. And it looks like the gladiator games are about to be played. So the first thing we're going to do is, is get to moving around these cards. And basically setting up our gladiatorial games. Now, a lot of you guys already know the combo where we use... Dragasis to, to just attack through things, but basically we're going to be sticking to that same notion so we attack Then we go ahead and begin our ritual because basically what I love about the gladiator combo is it's just it's a gladiator summoning ritual and You know it, it happens the same way every single time and it cooks just like branded's ritual. Nothing's wrong with that Nothing's wrong with that so let me go ahead and cook my ritual real quick. I'm gonna bring out the test panther. Come back, come back, bring back the tamer editor. Pop, pop. Now see, listen, we cannot go around destroying this card because it has an effect, but also because it has the uh, dark ruler no more effect on it. Actually, I wonder if the dark ruler no more will affect um, Mirror Jade, if it's sent to the graveyard, you know, does which which goes off first, the Mirror Jade's effect or Dark Ruler No More? Like, does Dark Ruler No More wear off or does Mirror Jade's effect work? If you use Dark Ruler No More to negate the effects of Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon and then Mirror Jade is sent to the graveyard, its destruction effect will not activate at the end of the turn. Fascinating. All right, so now that we know that for sure, I'm just going to show you what I did in the duel. So now I continue my combo, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring out this card here. So we're gonna go ahead and link into, I believe it's Abeloza, yes sir. And then we're gonna bring back the comeback. And then we're gonna link to, what did we link to? Oh no, oh yes, we went, to, oh yeah. Okay, yeah, so I forgot. I had to use the highest attack monster to go to Superstar Sayer Typhon because it sends the card back to the extra deck. And I wasn't sure about the whole idea with the Dark Ruler no more. So I wanted to be sure that when I got rid of it, it was truly gone. To put him in the same scenario as I did the last opponent, it's called the Net of the Retiardius. You see, back in the day when gladiators fought in the sands of Rome, in the Colosseum, there was a gladiator type known as the Retiari. He'd cast his mighty net against his opponent, in which there was no escape. And in this, I have cast my net on the opponent. Now go, Superstar Saleya! And then I end my turn. Now, what's cool about Superstar Slayer, monsters over 3,000 can't activate their effects. Looks like Herc won't be activating effects, seeing that he's over 3,000 and also I have no cards in hand. Also, um, monsters under 3,000 are sure to do that. And then also my opponent cannot uh, activate stuff over 3,000. You know, not to say that there's like a ton of stuff he can do with over 3,000 top decking. Also, uh, we got Apollosa making sure the graveyard stays dead. So let's continue. Stay dead. I said I end my turn, not I end our turn. Stay dead. 
Yes. So he has to end his turn. And now we have to give him the punishment. It's a me, Mario. I regret everything. I underestimated my opponent. I was disgusted when I saw this. Normally, I do not underestimate them. I give them 100% benefit of the doubt that this is what he drew, but I didn't. And he activated this, so I negated it. And since it doesn't say once per turn, um, oh no, it does it actually says you can only use each of the following once per turn. See, that's what I'm saying. You gotta learn these nuances, but I thought it said you could do it more than once per turn, kind of like a, um, uh, what do you call those guys? Those, uh, those monsters that you discard the card from the hand and they can go to the graveyard and summon themselves. But basically, I thought that he could do that multiple times per turn. So then I was like, better not risk the biscuit. So I stopped my attack knowing that that was the end of his turn and that was his card. And I went into SP so we could get rid of the Typhon because it was time just in case we needed to use a uh, Herx effect. Now, he of course goes into the spirit of you, Bell. And see, this is what happens when you make misplays because you didn't read. But I had to read up on the cards a little bit more. And so this is me trying to bait the effect so I can use Called by the Grave. <laughs> Funny watching this one back. And then uh, now I'm just waiting for him to just put this in the grave so I can kill it with this, basically. And then I didn't take the bait here. He summons this out. We're not taking the bait here. We also got SP. Um, so then he activates this. Now I go for the negate. He goes for the effect change. Thank you. That's a proper bait. Then I go for called by the grave. And I get him up out of here. Now he's like, no, me. So I spent his pot of greed. And then uh, that gets that good negate. That gets that good negate and destruction. And he's alone with one card. You and Jaden. And he's like, come back, spirit of you, Bale. I'm like, shut your ass up. Keep leaving him with one card. See, you know, my whole strategy, regardless if I do it correct or not, which tells you that it's a good strategy, that no matter who the opponent is, one card, no cards. Your ass is dead. I can chase you down. I can run you down. That's the whole point. That means that I have room to improve, which are the outlier games, which is that, as I mentioned, 65% win rate on the way up means there's a ton of room for improvement. This is an example of one of those duels.